From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of stolen jewels. This was no ordinary safari, this great collection of men and animals that made its way slowly through the dense jungle near Tarzan's seacoast cabin. The trappings of the elephants were rich, the raiments of the men ornate, and altogether unsuitable for the jungle wilds. And instead of guns, the group carried banners and silk flags bearing the symbol of the Pasha of Amdumara. This was a strange expedition indeed, and one completely unprepared for the attack of the vicious panther that suddenly sprang from the limb of a tree, landed on top of a huge elephant, and raked the slender body of its rider with its cruel talons. Falling to the ground, the panther's on top of the land. Look, another panther leaping from the... No, no, it is a man. A bronze savage with a knife in his hand. Fantastic. He's pulled the beast away from the boy. Yes, but the panther's turning on him now. I've never seen such a struggle. He seems to be holding his own with the animal, but he can't get his knife arm free. He has now. Look, he's got his knife poised. He... Oh, the fury with which he plunges that knife. Look. Oh. Oh. The animal is dead. Never before have these eyes witnessed such a... Did you hear that? The savage may be as dangerous as the panther. We have to get to the boy. Well, be on guard. You need not fear me. Come. I'll, I'll help with the boy. He speaks English. Have you bandages, medicine? We thought you were a savage. The way you're dressed, your sunburned skin. Please, you can speculate about me later. Medicines, bandages. We have no supplies of that kind. Miko. Miko. What? Miko. Where is Miko? That is the name by which he calls his elephant. I see. And what is his name? He is known as Heda. Well, the animals are all under control, including the precious Miko. Ah, you see, Heda? Your elephant is fine. Now, we must do our best to see that you can ride him again soon. Will you help me take Hayda to my seacoast cabin? I have herbs and medicines there. I'm afraid we can't take time to detour. If you want to take care of the boy, that's up to you. You mean you'd leave him here to die? I know it sounds cruel, and Herondon puts it badly. But you see, we are on a most important mission, a matter of state. We look for one known as Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. According to our information, he is a great potentate who rules all of this territory. Do you know where his palace is? <laughs> yes, yes, I... I know where his palace is. Well, out with it. Where is it? It lies in the same direction in which I will carry the boy. I shall lead you to the palace of the Lord of the Jungle, and perhaps on the way you can tell me a few things. Of course, of course. If what information do you seek? Why you carry no guns, no medical supplies, no equipment of any kind for the jungle. And why this mission is so important that you would desert a member of your party who might not be far from death. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to our story. Tarzan hurried ahead, carrying the injured youth in his arms, but he left behind him a well-marked trail which the strange safari followed. By the time the others had reached Tarzan's cabin, Tarzan had attended to Hayda's injuries and the boy rested fairly easily on a crude bed. Tarzan sat on the edge of the bed as his visitors entered. How is the lad? Very weak. But I've administered strong herbs and roots known only to the jungle people, and I think he will recover. Oh, good. And now, if you'll direct us to the palace of the Lord of the Jungle... You are in it. What? You can't mean this crude cabin. Surely you are not Tarzan. Yes, I am Tarzan. You mean we've crossed hundreds of miles of jungle to pay our respects to a ruler who wears the skin of an animal and lives in a shack. 
I am not a ruler. The, the natives call me Lord of the Jungle merely as a sign of affection and respect. But I owe you no explanation for my mode of living. You owe me one concerning your actions. You may have noticed from the banners carried by our safari that we are subjects of the Pasha of Omdurmara. I am familiar with his crest, yes. Our safari carried no weapons because it would have been a sign of ill will when we came on a mission of friendship. You see, we braved this expedition in order to pay our respects to the Lord of the Jungle and to deliver an invitation. An invitation? On the first day of Shabbat, when the position of the stars favor a fruitful union, His Serene Highness will be united in marriage with the Princess Budur Shariman Geyer, high-born lady of the realm. And you are invited to attend the marriage celebration. One that will last for 20 days and 20 nights. There will be great feasting and dancing and revelry. Gentlemen, I want your sovereign to know that I appreciate his invitation. It is a great compliment, but in my life there is no room for such social activities. Thank him and, and offer him my regrets. Oh, your refusal would be taken as a great insult. His Serene Highness would have no choice but to send an army to destroy you and your jungle people. Ah. I have no desire to bring war upon my people, nor to insult the Pasha of Omdurmara. I shall be in his city on the first day of Shabbat. That is February in your language, is it not? That's right, a little less than a month from now. I'll be there. Your mere attendance is not quite enough. Mika, Mika, where is Mika? Shh, Ada, your elephant is fine. I've tethered him and given him tender leaves and fine grass to eat. A thousand thanks to you, Tarzan. You are quite welcome. And now rest quietly while my visitors tell me why my mere attendance at the wedding of the Pasha is not sufficient. Well, firstly, you are to arrive the day before the wedding, bringing with you a gift of priceless value. I am instructed to bring such a gift? Uh, to send less than the others would be to invite trouble. Many potentates will come bearing presents of enormous magnitude. I possess little of intrinsic value. I am sure you will bring something suitable for His Excellency. It is the custom. I see. All right. And when you enter the city, you must be garbed in fine raiments, a robe of gold cloth, or perhaps of gossamer silk with threads of silver. Mm -hmm. And the other conditions? You will have a retinue of porters, bearers, personal boys, courtiers. Yes. And you will be mounted on a fine elephant. <laughs> well, that condition is not difficult. Tantor is my friend. No. A jungle elephant is hardly suitable. You are to be carried in a holder. A richly ornamented canopy on top of a trained elephant. The animal is to be perfumed and adorned with rich design. And you must have a trained mahout to guide the animal. This is ridiculous. Please, I... Tarzan, let me be your mahout. Let Miko be the elephant which carries you. It will fill our hearts with pride. I'm sorry, but I, I can't see... I own fine trappings for Miko. Very fine. You will be proud. <laughs> I'll agree to ride in a howdah. I'll, I'll even consent to have Hayda act as my mahout since he's so anxious. I will wear special clothes and I will bring a gift from my jungle. But I do not believe one man should be the master of others. I will not consent to employ a retinue of servants. Well, perhaps this stipulation will be waived. Perhaps I will enjoy seeing the lavish display of wealth, the extravagant presents sent to the wedding. And it will be a little vacation for me. Do not expect too peaceful a vacation, Tarzan. Where millions of dollars' worth of gifts are in evidence, where wealthy potentates gather, their pockets lined with gold, violence is never far away. When the Pasha's emissaries departed, they left behind the injured elephant boy. Within a few weeks, he had recovered, and he accompanied Tarzan when the jungle lord went on an important mission to the Karmiki tribe to acquire his gift for the Pasha. This business taken care of, Tarzan headed for the mountain country of the north. There, climbing on perilous crags, he visited the nesting places of the eagles. From these, he acquired another requisite for the wedding. And then, his preparations completed, he headed for Amdurmara, arriving on the day before the beginning of Shoba. You make a fine sight, Tarzan. The people of the city look at us in wonderment. <laughs> it's because your elephant, Mika, wears such fine trappings. No one can even see me inside this howdah. They see me riding on Mika's noble head. And they know that inside the howdah rides a man of great importance. They bow low before my master. I am not your master, Hayda. I'm your friend. I is that the Pasha's palace ahead? It is indeed. And look, the courtiers await our approach. They stand by the gate waiting to greet you. Oh, there is a great crowd. 
And they're all dressed far differently than I. I hope they understand the customs of my jungle. In your special wedding suit, you look most regal. Halt! Halt and make known your identity and your mission. I am Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. I come to celebrate the marriage of your sovereign. Descend from your elephant and be recognized. It's all right, Ben Cayman. I know Tarzan. Welcome to the palace of his serene... <laughs> Why do you laugh? <laughs> that outfit you're wearing, that suit of feathers. You look as though you're ready for a fancy dress ball. I climbed mountains many thousands of feet high, brave, dangerous crags to get these feathers. They are from the nests of eagles. From eagles? Are you trying to be funny? Perhaps I've been apart from civilization too long. You, you see, the eagle is the symbol of great bravery. He resides only in the highest places. To attend the wedding of one who occupies a high place in your land, I thought it right that I should honor him by wearing the eagle's dress. It is a jungle custom. Well, I hope your gift makes up for this ridiculous costume you wear. Oh, I have no fear. I have brought His Excellency this necklace of the Kamiki. Here, I, I shall show it to you. That? That necklace of feathers and bones and claws? Why, it looks like a piece of native junk. Junk? This is beyond price. The Karmikis parted with it only after great argument. It's sacred to them. Its wearing is the greatest of honors. The necklace contains the feather of the eagle, the claw of the leopard, the ivory of the bull elephant. It denotes bravery, cunning, and great strength. Tarzan, your manner of dress and this, uh, this present constitute a great insult to a man who has received a fortune in gifts during the past few days. Jade figures encrusted with diamonds, ruby pendants... Ornaments of matched pearls and onyx. I fear that your days in Omdurmara will not be filled with celebration and feasting. If you are displeased, I could return to my jungle now. You will be fortunate if the Pasha permits you to return at all. In just a moment, we shall return with a conclusion of Stolen Jewels. Despite the warning of Mr. Herendon, advisor to the Pasha of Amdomara, the mighty potentate accepted Tarzan's gift without comment. Nor did the monarch see fit to find anything strange in the jungle man's unusual costume. Tarzan was invited to enter the palace with Heda, his lone attendant and to join the enormous throng which filled the room of a thousand treasures. At one end of the room, the Pasha sat in state, surrounded by his viceroys, grandees, emirs, and wazirs. And at the end, the visitors to Amdomara passed before the collection of fabulous gifts. It is good of you to show me around, Emir. I am sorry I was otherwise occupied, or I would have greeted you at the gate. Oh, I wish you had. I feel you might have understood the motives that prompted my garb and my gift. His serene excellency understood. We talked it over, and he accepted the gift as it was intended. But come, you are paying little attention to his other gifts. It does not show the proper respect. Ah, oh, my eyes have been paying them respect. What is this? This figure is the sun idol of the Bizarines, sent by their king. It is of white jade. The eyes are of star sapphires. The nose consists of perfect amethysts. And the mouth is of rubies, of course. Those are diamonds and emeralds in the base. It's gorgeous. And these? These unset stones are from the Raja of Imnabur. Some will be used to decorate the wedding veil of the princess. The rest will be placed in the royal treasury until some purpose is found for them. And that unusual urn over there, it's lovely. Ah, yes. Hey, pardon me a moment. I see a new arrival to whom I must pay my respects. Examine the urn, Tarzan. It is of gold and silver and platinum, sent by the British government. I shall return immediately. Oh, I'll be all right. This magnificent collection embarrasses me. But if the Pasha could only realize the meaning of the Karmiki necklace... The jewels! The unset stones! They have been stolen! Someone has stolen the jewels! A thief! Someone has stolen the Pasha's A jewels! A thief among us! His Serene Highness, the Imperial Pasha of Omdurmara, desires silence. Those standing within ten paces of the gift tables are to advance to his presence. Ah, there you are, Tarzan. I lost you for a moment. Who could possibly accept the Pasha's hospitality and then steal a priceless gift? I don't know. We are to stand here in this semicircle before His Excellency. I believe he intends to speak. His Imperial Sovereignty, 
the Pasha of Omdurmana. My guests and servants of my guests, you have been accorded the honor of being invited within the confines of my palace. You have been accorded the privilege of viewing my gifts. One of you has violated these concessions. If I might suggest, Your Excellency. Yes, Mr. Herendon. Of all those assembled, only one of your guests saw fit to come here dressed as though for a masquerade. Only one of your guests saw fit to bring a present of no value. What point do you make, Mr. Herendon? It is my feeling that such a guest would not hesitate to insult you further by stealing the jewels. Your Excellency. Yes, Tarzan. I think the emir understands my dress and my gift. But even if all of you should misunderstand these, it does not make a thief of me. I shall willingly submit to a search. Tarzan, it is not fitting that my guest should be searched, you nor anyone else. Mr. Herendon, I am displeased that you should have made such a reckless accusation. Perhaps I have my reasons for making the accusation. What? There'll be no more talk of the theft. It is forgotten. It is not forgotten, Your Excellency. I have been accused, and I intend to clear myself. Since you will not search me and thus make clear that I have not stolen the jewels, it is up to me to find the guilty one. Well, Heda, I can find no trace of the jewels anywhere. I've been all over the encampment. Come inside your tent and rest. Forget about the jewels and think only of tomorrow's pageant. I suppose you will work far into the night getting Mika ready for the pageant, eh? When the elephants pass the reviewing stand of the Pasha and his princess, none will surpass Mika in elegance. Yes, I imagine you will polish Mika's trappings until they shine like Kuda the sun, huh? None will gleam with the radiance of Mika's howdah and bands and ornamentation. You will be proud. If only you still wore the suit of feathers. The Pasha granted me permission to wear my more accustomed leopard skin. I, I feel more comfortable in it. Uh, you, you'd better run along, Hader. Here comes my dear friend, Mr. Harrington, company of his guards. I shall go. I do not like the Englishman, and I fear his Ascari. Tarzan, I would like to have a few words with you. What book? Yes? Put your men at ease, Captain Ben Zeman. Yes, Well, Mr. Herndon? It may interest you to know that your apparent attempt to find the jewels and the thief have not gone unnoticed. I've made no secret of my attempt to find the culprit. As a matter of fact, you've looked almost all over the encampment, except here... Back of your own quarters. Of course I haven't searched my own quarters. I know that I am not responsible for... What is it? There, in the crotch of that tree. Could that be... The jewels, hidden beneath the foliage. Men! If you make one move for your might, I will order my men to use their bayonets. I will make no move. Captain Damon, take the jewels to the Pasha. The rest of you see that Tarzan is taken to our very finest dungeon. <laughs> Come to release me, Mr. Herndon? Yes, and I'm sorry I accused you falsely and caused your arrest. I was merely attempting to do my duty to the Pasha. This whole matter is most confusing. What, what has occurred to convince you now that I am not guilty? The jewels found near your tent turned out to be nothing but bits of paste and glass planted there for some unexplainable reason to cast suspicion on you. Though how they expected to do so with imitation stones, I don't know. Nor I. Well, the Pasha knows of your arrest, and he shall learn of your release. But I would advise you to stay out of sight until the pageant tomorrow, lest your enemies strike again. Mighty monarch. You are pleased with the way your loyal subjects have festooned this reviewing stand? It is pleasing to the eye. May Allah permit the spectacle to begin. The procession will begins, Your Serene Highness. The princess can see from her place in the stands. Your princess and the ladies of her court have positions of advantage. They see well. The other members of my entourage? All right here with you, or at most a short distance from Your Excellency. All save Mr. Herondon. We have saved the place for him. His duties must make him tardy. Behold, your mounted guard of honor, Excellency. Ah, they present a noble appearance. 
They ride as though they and their horses were one. Behind them, the Camel Corps of the Sheikh of Kyle Seed. It is well. Ah, that is a sight to please the eye. The white elephant with the silver trappings. Who is that, Emir? That is the Roger of Imnabur. He who gave you the priceless sun idol of a thousand gems. And the dignitary being carried in the gold brocaded sedan chair is the Caliph of Karadan. I fail to recognize him who approaches on the massive black elephant. The one drawing close to the stand now. I do not know him. His bearded face is familiar. Behind the stranger is Tarzan. His elephant is richly adorned. But I do not know the identity of... Uh... Well, it matters not. There are many guests who have come to pay honor to me. <laughs> Watch out, Your Excellency! The elephant of the stranger is out of control. He's charging directly at our stand. He's charging the stand. before the reviewing stand milled in hopeless confusion, the elephant of the bearded stranger reared, trumpeted, and crashed into the wooden structure. Asha and his courtiers crowded together were helpless. In another moment, dozens would die in this melee. Suddenly, from the back of Mikaw, Tarzan leaped onto the mammoth black elephant. The curved anchors he had wrenched from Hader dug into the elephant's vulnerable cheek, and his commanding voice made the frenzied animal suddenly mild. The bearded stranger attempted to goad the beast into renewed violence, but now Tarzan sprang at him. They fell to the ground. As they landed, Tarzan gripped him with a hand of steel, and one quick motion ripped the beard from his face. Warrington! Erendon wearing a disguise? What is the meaning of this? I... I, I can explain. I think I can explain more easily and more truthfully. Harrington plotted to steal the fabulous sun idol given you by the Raja of Imnabur. That's ridiculous. Quiet. I will hear Tarzan. Mr. Harrington felt that he had already cast enough suspicion on me to avert attention from himself. It was important, of course, that I be freed last night so I might be accused of what was to happen today. But how could you be blamed? The bearded stranger was to make for the woods once he had accomplished his purpose. Later, Harrington would swear that he had been an accomplice of mine... By the time I'd been cleared, Harrington was to have had the treasure safely concealed. Out of the country, perhaps. Pure conjecture. Not at all. Despite your warning to keep out of sight, I remained near the palace last night, and I overheard much. What was his exact plan, Tarzan? He was to cause a great commotion here in the square, even if it necessitated killing you. No, it's not true. Well, while all of your subjects rushed to your aid, the idol was to be taken from the palace by two of his accomplices. Others would be waiting in the woods to spirit away the elephant. Then, Harrington was to have returned, without the disguise, to make his accusation. No, no, it's all a peck of lies. Take the traitor away. No, please, your serene highness. Please, please. Oh, I am quite tired. I have not the patience to witness the rest of the pageant. You have not yet awarded the prize for the finest spectacle of the pageant. And who are you? I am Heda, Mahout of Tarzan. And this is Mika, my elephant. Is he not fine? Heda, you handle the animal well. Tarzan, in his leopard skin, put all others to shame. And the adornment of the elephant is beyond belief. The jewels in its trappings, gleaming in the rising sun, fairly dazzle the eye. You shall get the prize. <laughs> you are most kind, Your Excellency, but despite Hader's pride, I am well aware that our trappings are nothing more than bits of tinsel. They are made of paste and glass. Your joke is feeble, Tarzan. I have been surrounded by costly jewels since I lay in my crib. The ornamentation of your elephant's trappings are worth a fortune. <laughs> hey, do you own these trappings? What do you say? There is no use in attempting to deceive the Pasha. The gems are real. They are the ones stolen from the room of a thousand treasures. I stole them. You, what? You stole them? Yes. Mr. Herndon may have attempted the other theft, but I stole the jewels. I needed them for Mika's decorations. You needed them? Explain yourself, Mahout. From the day I first saw Tarzan, the day he saved my life... I knew he was the most noble man in all the world. It, it was important that the elephant that carried him in the pageant should be the finest and the richest. I see. That was my only thought when I saw the jewels. I used them to replace ones of glass and paste. The imitations I concealed in the crotch of a tree behind our tent. So? I know Hader will have to be punished, mighty Pasha, Silence. But... I am well aware that he was but attempting to repay you for saving his life. And I'm well aware that I, too, owe you for my life. I make no claim on that account. Hader, crimes must be punished. For a small crime leads to a bigger one. One theft leads to a hundred more. However, when I pass judgment on you, I shall show leniency. For I agree with you in one important thing. Tarzan deserves none but the most costly of jewels. And those that adorn your Miko are his now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
In just a moment, we shall return with a word about our next story. Most people think of Africa as a land of intolerable heat. And it is true that a large segment of the dark continent swelters under a grueling sun. Yet the Ruanzori Range, astride the equator, is never free of snow. And it is there that Tarzan experiences the greatest hardships of his life. A grueling battle against the elements in our next story, The Drum Without a Heart. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Thank you.